spacecraft that uh, ISRO hopes to land on the moon also that has been wheeled into the country's spaceport, which is the Satish Dhawan Space Center. And named as Chandrayaan-3, this will be India's third lunar mission and will be attempting both controlled soft landing on the lunar surface and also when it comes to the analysis that also will be carried out by the rover. Let's uh, first listen in uh, to what the ISRO chief had to say. Lesson is simple. Lesson is very simple. Learn from the past. Do what is possible with your capacity at this moment. That's all. Failures may happen. Even now, this could have failed. You know, a rocket launches like that. That there are thousands of reasons that it can fail. And if it is, uh, if you are, if there is a uh, system like that, fine. But we have to do what is needed to be done so that we don't regret later. That's all. Uh. Ready to leak, but it leak. <laughs> yeah. Correct. That's how it is. See, every time we implement various committees, recommendations happen, we do implement. But things can go wrong. It is, it is like that. This business is that possibility of a failure is always there. That's why we are tense. No, otherwise you could have fire and forget. <laughs> that we already answered. Now we'll go to some. That's all. Chandrayaan will be launched in July. I'm very confident. All right, so there you heard it uh, from the ISRO chief. Now remember, this takes us back as he's uh, declared the launch of Chandrayaan 3 in the month of July. Now remember, Chandrayaan 2 was also supposed to catapult uh, India into the space race, but what had happened was, was that the moon lander hit several snags from a small technical glitch that held up the launch to uh, later a loss of contact with the craft. But uh, once again, the ISRO chief very, very optimistic this time around. Of course, he's speaking of the scope of uh, these kind of missings that may happen even now, but very optimistic at that. And he's now declared that the Chandrayaan-3 launch will take place in the month of July, a follow-on mission to Chandrayaan-2, which will demonstrate end to capability in safe landing and roving on the lunar surface. Let's listen in once again to what the ISRO chief has stated. Chandrayaan will be launched in July. I'm very confident. Chandrayaan will be launched in July. I'm very confident. Well, uh, Dr. Ajay Lele is with us here on the broadcast, sir. Good afternoon to you. Chandrayaan-3, that has been announced, sir. And of course, as we heard from the ISRO chief saying that in rocket science, there are always unknown unknowns. So there are several of them. But however, we are hoping for a successful mission this year, sir. No, definitely. You see, if you see the entire program of ISRO as far as moon mission is concerned, it has been more or less a very successful program because we started in the year 2008 when we undertook the first mission to the moon. Uh, subsequently, uh, India was supposed to collaborate with Russia for the second mission to the moon, because first mission to the moon was supposed to be placing a satellite into the orbit of the moon and taking the pictures. That was a successful mission done by ISRO. Uh, the second mission was that the what we call a satellite, which will go into the vicinity of a moon, and there will be a rover and lander uh, put on the surface of the moon. That was supposed to be the Russia's job. Uh, but since Russia was not able to do that, ISRO scientists took it on to them and they developed this rover and a lander system. But unfortunately, instead of a soft landing, just few meters before uh, getting launched or getting established itself onto the moon surface, uh, it did a hard landing. Uh, so now ISRO is going to attempt the same thing again uh, in the month of July as uh, Chairman Isro has just now mentioned. And I'm sure that they must have learned all sorts of mistakes which had happened in the earlier phase and they will be taking extra precautions to overcome not only the mistakes which had happened in the earlier phase, but just to ensure that no other sort of mistakes also do happen. Mm. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that they should be able to uh, have a good success uh, in the month of July. Okay, all right. Uh, Dr. Lele, now, you know, if we talk about Chandrayaan 2, two and a half months after the event, ISRO had informed everyone that the moon-bound Vikram lander did actually land, but it was a hard landing instead of the soft one that they were hoping for. So these kind of uh, technical issues, it's very well possible that, you know, they may crop up even now. And that's what the ISRO chief was saying. You see, rocket science is an unforgiving science. 
uh, it is not only in the case of uh, India. All over the world, you can see no agency which is involved into the business of a space has ever had 100% success. Because there are so many things which may go unnoticed. There are so many challenges which are there out into the space. Because we just don't know what sort of atmospheric pressures are happening, what sort of other activities which are happening out into the space. Because after you launch a mission, the mission is in an autonomous mode and it takes corrects as per the environmental situations at that point in time. If you see India's mass program, I'm slightly digressing over here. India is the first country to enter into the Martian orbit in the first go successfully. Uh, so those types of challenges are there all over the world. And if you are there in the business of a space, you need to be aware that there could be pitfalls also. Uh, but uh, until and unless you don't go through that, because the scientific community always says that what teaches them more is a failure than the success. So definitely since we had a failure, it must have taught uh, this scientific community quite a few things about how to undertake the mission, particularly of putting a rover lander on the moon surface, mm. and they will be able to overcome it in uh, coming few months. And by July, they should be able to launch the mission. I think that was uh, something on the similar lines that was also said by the former ISRO chief, Mr. Sivan, there, because uh, we are expecting that he will also be speaking on this issue of Menakshi, if you can tell us, because back then uh, he had said that Chandrayaan 2, which had achieved at least 98% success, and also when, to, uh, when it comes to several objectives that he had cited, so it was not completely a failure. Well, absolutely. Uh, you know, Amit, as you rightly stated, Chandrayaan 2 was never a complete failure. In fact, uh, picking up from where we left the ISRO is all set to go uh, on a moon mission 3.0. But what are the salient features of Chandrayaan 3? Why it's so significant? Uh, these are the details which have been put up by none other than ISRO itself. I'll just quickly take our viewers through the same. So, Chandrayaan 3 is a follow-on mission to Chandrayaan 2 to demonstrate end-to-end -end capacity when it comes to safe landing and roving on the lunar surface. What are the lander pay? Uh, the lander payloads are uh, Chandra surface uh, thermophysical experiment which is going to measure the thermal conductivity and also the temperature uh, and also it could tell us a little bit about the lunar seismic activity uh, which is yet unknown. Uh, then let's quickly go on to rover payloads. Uh, ISRO says that alpha particle x-ray spectrometer and also laser inducted breakdown spectrometer will help derive the elemental composition in the vicinity of the landing site. So to simplify, uh, it's going tell us a little bit about the seismic activity when it comes to lunar surface also the temperature the thermal activity uh, then you know taking our viewers through more uh, what the mission hopes to achieve uh, and the type of technology which are present in the lander all the technologies when it comes to of course propulsion systems uh, the navigation guidance the hazard detection all of that has also been listed by ISRO what are the specifications this is very very significant and garners a lot of uh, you know interest as well uh, the uh, mission life is going to be one uh, lunar day that's equivalent to 14 earth days for us uh, landing site um, is four kilometer into 2.4 kilometer uh, in fact uh, when we speak um, of uh, you know the science payloads the lander uh, you know what all it's going to carry it's going to have radio anatomy of moon bound hypersensitive uh, iconosphere also chandra surface thermophysical experiment instrument of lunar seismic activity alpha particle x-ray etc uh, the you know what's going to be the mass or the weight uh, of the propulsion module it's going to be 2148 kgs the lander module 1752 kilogram uh, and the total weight you know of chandrayaan 3 will be 3900 kilogram uh, the propulsion module will be 758 watts uh, that's also very very uh, significant uh, and you know taking you through some more um, updates uh, and the salient features um, the lander propulsion system will be a bipropellant propulsion system uh, in fact uh, what all you know mechanism or what all will it uh, uh, contain uh, the lander mechanism will have a lander reg rover ramp rover and obviously uh, x-ray band antenna and umbilical uh, which is going to be connected to the protection mechanism. Uh, talking, you know, a little more uh, about uh, what the objectives are. Uh, obviously, it's quantitative and um, qualitative apologies and quantitative element and analysis. The idea is to derive the chemical composition and infer uh, mineralogical composition to further our understanding of lunar surface. That's the major objective of the mission and also using the X-ray spectrum.
spectrometer uh, ISRO would try to determine the elemental composition of lunar soil and rocks around the lunar landing site here are some pictures as well of uh, you know what the lander module uh, will look like this is the propulsion module uh, if you take a look at the other elements you know these pictures have also been put up by ISRO uh, you have of course uh, various views uh, of uh, Chandrayaan 3 uh, various parts of Chandrayaan here is the type of camera you know it's going to uh, have um, this is going to be of course uh, the lander module on which uh, the entire you know Chandrayaan mission uh, will sit uh, this is the view of the propulsion uh, module all these pictures have been put up uh, by uh, ISRO itself and these pictures of course will give you an idea of uh, what it's going to look like if you take a look at this picture uh, so this is the uh, you know trajectory it's going to follow uh, this is a lunar transfer trajectory once it leaves earth it's going to take uh, you know it's going to circle around the moon and land on the moon this entire exercise uh, will take about 14 Earth days. That's one uh, lunar day. There are some more pictures which have been put up by Chandrayaan, uh, rather ISRO itself. Uh, ISRO, of course, calls it another milestone here. They are declaring uh, that uh, you know Chandrayaan 3 spacecraft successfully has completed the essential test which has validated that it's capable to withstand the harsh vibration, the acoustic environment uh, which it could face during its launch. So ISRO obviously is very confident. And here are some more pictures, you know, of Chandrayaan-3, uh, the propellant, the, uh, you know, the, the launcher, uh, which have been put out by ISRO. These pictures, of course, are available first and exclusively uh, only on Times. Now, I'll quickly take our viewers through all these pictures. Of course, this will give you, uh, you know, almost a 3D view of what Chandrayaan-3 is going to look like a better understanding when we speak, Amita, of India's moon mission. Back to you. All right. So, uh, Minakshi, getting us some of the technical details, Dr. Ajay, you know, would you want to come in and share with us what we can expect? Uh talk about uh, what we've really learned from Chandrayaan 2. Like we've been pointing out, it wasn't a failure all in all. Uh, the mission did remain a success, at least if we talk about the scientific objective. Would you want to elaborate a little bit more on the lessons we've learned and how we'll perhaps take it forward when we go ahead with Chandrayaan 3? You see, as far as Chandrayaan 2 was concerned, it has got uh, three components. One is what we call a orbiter, that is a satellite type of a system which enters into the moon's orbit uh, and continues to take various observations of the moon's surface. And the other system was a rover and a lander system. So as far as a rover and a lander system, it was a robotic system which was supposed to land onto the moon's surface and subsequently uh, the rover would have come out of the belly of a lander and it would have undertaken certain observations. So it's a robotic equipment which was supposed to move onto the surface of the moon and undertake some observations. Uh, when ISRO had announced this mission, uh, I'm talking of Chandrayaan-2, uh, it was initially thought that the life of an orbiter will be there for one year. But subsequently, the mission had taken off in such a good fashion uh, that uh, immediately ISRO had declared the life of our orbiter would be there for seven years. Uh, that means the capabilities of the batteries uh, which was required for taking the mission out into the uh, moon's surface or into the vicinity of the moon, uh, hardly there was any sort of what one can say usage of those batteries uh, to recalibrate the mission. So mission went in a perfect fashion. So now that orbiter is there and it is giving us a lot amount of a data. So based on that data itself, now uh, ISRO has worked out the plan for the Chandrayaan-3. Like it was rightly pointed out that there are two to three aspects which are very important. We want to understand the mineralogical mapping of the moon surface. Uh, this is important from two perspectives. One is that future lies into colonization of a moon. Uh, ISRO has been pretty successful in the mission which took off in the year 2008 to identify the possibility of water on the moon along with NASA scientists. So that is one big achievement which we had in the year 2008. Now we want to understand the composition of a moon surface also uh, from a perspective that future, if humans wants to go, stay there, land over there, what sort of a challenges which they are going to face it over there. The other aspect is that uh, particularly why all countries are looking at a moon. There is a substance called helium-3 which is available in abundance on the moon surface. And the theoretical calculations are that if you can get helium-3 back to the surface of the earth, all your energy related challenges will get over uh, significantly. Particularly today you are using nuclear energy where you got plutonium uh, and uranium sort of a material which is used. So